Hi, I'm Philia Stein and I'm the Safari Expert and today I'm chatting to one of the world's best wildlife photographers, Hannes Lochner. Hannes, thanks so much for joining me. Thanks, Philia. Hannes is just about to release his sixth coffee table book, Once Upon a Time. I'm going to jump straight in. Tell us a little bit more about the book and how does it differ from your five previous books? Um, this is a bit more of a fun project. It's basically storytelling photographs, um, offering an intimate insight basically on storytelling. It's, um, it was a fun project, it's a passion project. Where it differs from my previous publications is that it's not on a certain area. Where I used to be in the Kalahari or the Okavango or in Namibia or wherever I was based. This is basically taken everywhere in southern Africa, but most importantly it's, it's photographs. Um, it's one of the genres that I like the most, it's, it's storytelling. For those of you that don't know Hannes Shots, it's incredibly creative and I always look at them and I think to myself, I don't even think I would be able to create half these images. And I think what you don't always understand is that we can be out in the field and see something amazing and in that moment we get the shot because we're in the right place and we have the right settings and we've got some experience. But the shots that I've seen in this book, the few at least that I've seen on the Kickstarter campaign, they are shots that you literally have to conceptualize. And I think that's my next question is, how many of the shots in this book are shots that you planned long in advance and otherwise you conceptualize them as opposed to something that just randomly happened? Well, um, this publication I was working on for about five years. Usually I take two to three years for publication, but this one has been five years now. So I could actually go to certain areas and focus on things that I've been thinking about for the last few years. Um, I've been trying, for example, my cover where I get the 50-50 shot of um, a subject in the background and obviously something that's happening under, under the water where the, um, the different carp uh, fish is swimming around. That image is a lot of planning, although it's in a natural water hole and it's, it's, it's set up within a water hole. Everything is natural about it. It's just, you have to plan these things. Um, the subjects are there. You just have to be patient um, and set it up perfectly. There was a lot of problems with lighting and all these things to kind of um, um, ma make the light perfect. That's what makes the image so special yeah. is you had to go through that challenge and I don't think people always realize how difficult it is yeah. to get shots like that cover photo. I, I, love, I love images that's in the moment. Um, I, I should say at least half the book, no, I should say actually about 70% of the book is all um, spur of the moment um, yeah. kind of storytelling images. But the, the technical side of uh, the, the book is, is, is I had to plan a lot of planning evolved and um, time and, and luckily I had that. So it's five years of I remember making. I remember when Tabby and I first met you in the Kalahari 10 years ago in Tuerafiran and you took us out on a drive to look for leopards. You were telling us about how you would go back to a waterhole to try and get a Lana falcon catching a, a sand grouse and you would go back day after day after day or trying to get um, a leopard with a full moon rising. You know, you, yeah. you're going to do what you needed to do to get that shot. And yeah. I think that's what sets you apart from a lot of other wildlife photographers is you have that shot in mind and you'll do everything you need to get it. I have a booklet where I write things and I draw little pictures of how I sort of see the image in my head. And it doesn't always look like the sketch that I had, but it, it, it basically, it's, it's in that line and I tick them off, that's which great. is quite nice. Um, I remember a few, uh, I should say about eight years ago, one of the, uh, I had a, uh, a woman came up to me and says, what are you looking for? I said, well, I'm looking, waiting for a, um, a butterfly to sit on this leopard. I said, but there's no butterflies here. I said, but if you look carefully, there was a lot of butterflies sitting on its lip, drinking the, you know, the, 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 you know while it's celebrating the, 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 the water droplets off its lips. And I was waiting for the big ones to come into land. There was a particular green one that I want, although I didn't get the shot. You have to know the subject and you, you need to know behavior and then you can start planning these kind of things. So, so it, it, it does happen, you yeah. just have to be patient, you have to have the time. Recently on social media you've been posting a lot of behind the scenes um, of you and Noah in the field. Um, Noah is Hannah's wife and she does filmmaking while they're in the field and records a lot of the behind the scenes. Um, so you were saying these things were recorded throughout Southern Africa over the past five years, just you guys out in the wilderness yeah. collecting it. Out in the bush, a lot of these uh, uh, images was also, as I said, at least about 40 to 50 percent was actually on photographic safaris. Oh, really? Yeah. So um, it was uh, not that, um, you know, 
the guests always look at um, kind of, I should say, the animals in a different way that I look at things. I, I look at things in what I need for a publication or what I will. Yeah. So I always have to look in laying out books and space here and space there. So at the end of the day, yeah, a lot of it was taken on, on, on safaris. It's very yeah. funny. Hannes lives about two kilometers from here, me here in Hootspreet. And even though we bump into each other even every now and again in the grocery store, we actually see each other on safari more regularly. I bumped into you in Kalahari a couple of years ago and we saw each other in Mashar too. Yeah. Tell us just very briefly about your photographic safaris. Who do you lead it with and, and how, you know, is there some way where people can find out more? Yeah, it's, it's a company called Amazing Views from Switzerland. Um, we basically do about eight to nine trips together every year. Um, it differs from Namibia, Botswana, South Africa, um, and now we uh, also included Zambia. So, yeah. I'll put the link in the video description Fantastic. if you want to go and learn more about Hannes' safaris. You know, what an amazing opportunity to learn from one of the best and most creative photographers in the field. So definitely go and check that out. I'll add Hannes' uh, Instagram uh, handle there as well. But let's get back to the book. Tell the viewers how do they actually get their hands on the book because this time it works a little bit differently. It's not going yeah. to be available in the shops. Yeah. Um, how can the viewers get their hands on Once Upon a Time? Well, basically on all the social networks, um, you'll see there's a link and you basically click it. It's being advertised on a Kickstarter campaign. Uh, the first step you do, you click the button, you say, I'd like to back this project and then you go and choose your options. You pledge, you just write an email address and choose a password credit card details, boom, done, clock. So it. it's, it's, it's very simple. Um, but like I said, it, it's only going to be available on the 30th of June. This is not going to bookshops. It will only be available. Yep. So we're basically going to just print on demand. Yep. So it's because printing is very expensive at the moment. Yep. Uh, it got very expensive. So we are not going to sit with bulk. Guys, I will add that link um, at the top of the video description. So if you would like to get your hands on Once Upon a Time, go to that Kickstarter campaign and support Hannes. I've held these coffee table books in my hand so many times and I can tell you, it's not like just a, a flimsy magazine or something like this. This is an actual work of art and really something that you can hand down through generations. They, they're basically collector's items. So if you're looking for a fantastic Christmas present or birthday present for someone that loves photography and nature, or even something that you just want to keep in your lodge or in your own, own home, go and check out this book. Hannes, thank you so much for joining me this morning and best of luck. Um, I can't wait to see the book myself. I only saw a few of those teaser photographs on the Kickstarter campaign, but uh, I can't wait to see the 80 or 90 odd shots that I haven't seen yet, which obviously at this stage is a bit of a secret. Yeah, it's, it's something new. It's something a little bit more creative. I brought my graphic design skills that I studied way back at university, a little bit more in designing um, the book. Um, Noah's helping a lot with it. Um, yeah, so it was a fun project. If it's the last one, then uh, I hope you go out on a high and I look forward to seeing you on Safari again soon. Fantastic. Okay. Thanks, Thanks for Thanks, Cheers.